In the last lecture, we dealt with the force on a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field and we found that this forms the basis of instruments called galvanometers which detect current. Galvanometers can be converted into ammeters so that current can be measured. Galvanometers only detect ammeters measures the current and galvanometers can also be converted into voltmeters which measure the voltages or the source voltage that is there in the circuit. In this lecture, we start with magnetism and the first thing this I have done many times this may appear to you to be repetitive, but it needs to be said. You see we, we learned that poles can never be isolated. We must have each magnet has two poles however small or however large it has two poles. If we want to find isolated poles then we can approximate only we have very long bars and the ends of these can be considered as isolated poles. Otherwise, isolated poles or monopoles do not exist and force between the two poles is like the force of gravitation between the two masses or the force of um, electric attraction between two charges is equal to mu 0 by 4 pi into m 1 m 2 by r squared. It is a inversely proportional to r squared and the Gauss law again like we did in the previous one or two lectures is b dot d s is equal to 0 which is the statement of the fact that monopoles do not exist and which also tells us that the magnetic field lines must form loops. This we have done so I am going through this uh, quickly. The magnetic field intensity we can define in the same way as the electric field intensity. We say that if there is a magnet it creates around itself a field in which if another magnet or a current or a charge is uh, coming then it will feel the effect of this field and the intensity of this field formally can be defined as this. We, we never get this field actually we have field due to a dipole all the time and like other fields magnetic field also is depicted or pictured through the field lines magnetic field lines and you know you must have done this experiment of drawing the magnetic field lines due to a bar magnet and you also know that the tangent to a line whether it is electric field line or magnetic field line the tangent to such a line gives us the direction of the field and since the tangent gives the direction of the field the two lines cannot cross because then there are two tangents and there will be two directions of the field which is not possible at each point the field is unique it has a certain direction it does not have two directions and therefore the two lines cannot cross. There is a tension along the lines of force I have told you uh, many times before that the lines of force or the, the magnetic field lines they act like springs if I stretched spring if I let them go then the spring contracts similarly the field lines also tend to contract and they give rise to because of this effect of contraction along the length they give rise to the attraction between the two opposite poles and they also have a lateral pressure that there is a pressure across the lines of force and this gives rise to the repulsion between similar poles. Now a short bar magnet acts like a magnetic dipole and its moment we have seen is the, the strength of the pole into the distance between the poles. It does not matter whether they are in a straight line or not even if the magnet is bent like this the dipole moment would be the distance between these two poles and the strength of the pole. It does not matter what the shape of the magnet is the distance between the two poles and the strength of the pole the product of these two is called the dipole moment of the magnet and dipole magnetic dipole behaves exactly like an electric dipole which we have done 
uh, many times before and therefore I just quote the results. The method of finding the expression is the same. So, I just quote the result and draw parallel between the electric and magnetic dipoles. The at a point on an axial line at a distance much larger than this length of the dipole that is this is the dipole then the axial line is this this is the axial line that is along the dipole. The field is given by mu 0 by 4 pi into 2 m by r cubed m you remember is the magnetic moment of the dipole. Parallel is drawn with the electric field. The electric field is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into 2 p by r cubed where p is the dipole moment of the electric dipole. At a point on the equatorial line of a at a distance much larger than the length of the dipole that is if I this is the dipole then I am finding the field on a on a uh, on uh, at a point on a line which is perpendicular to the dipole then the magnetic field is given by mu 0 by 4 pi into m by r cubed where m is the magnetic moment and the corresponding case in the electric field would be E equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 p by r cubed where p is the electric dipole moment. Torque on a magnetic dipole we just saw in the last lecture is m crossed b and the parallel is p crossed E in the electric field case. So, the torque on an electric dipole in an electric field is p crossed E. The torque on a magnetic dipole in a magnetic field is m cross b and the work done or the potential energy of a dipole in a uniform magnetic field is minus m dot b. So, you see it is a it is energy therefore, it cannot be vector it must be dot product. So, minus m dot b and the parallel case is minus p dot e in the electric case. Time period of oscillations of a dipole in a uniform field you see if I have a uniform magnetic field and shift it slightly then it starts oscillating. Similarly, with the electric field and you can easily show that these oscillations are simple harmonic. Remember what is a simple harmonic oscillation in which the acceleration is proportional to the displacement and is in the opposite direction. So, if you use that rule then you can show that the time period of oscillation of a dipole in a uniform magnetic field is 2 pi square root of 1 by m times b and in the case of electric dipole it is 2 pi 1 by m times b this is 1 by p times e. Now, let us take the case of atomic physics that an atom has a nucleus and then large number of electrons going around this nucleus and these electrons they are charges and since they are moving they constitute currents. And we have seen that the if you take a charge and if it takes time t to move around then it is equivalent to a current E by t and t is nothing but omega by 2 pi. So, the equivalent current is E omega by 2 pi where omega is the angular frequency of the charge and the magnetic moment of this current or this electron moving around the nucleus is the you know the current times area remember that. So, it is E omega by 2 pi which is the current times the area which is pi r squared. So, it is E omega r squared by 2 that is the magnetic moment of the electron moving around the nucleus with frequency omega and of radius r. Now, according to Bohr theory the angular momentum in the nth orbit of a charged particle is uh, if i is the moment of inertia is i omega which is m r squared omega which is equal to n h by 2 pi. You remember this h is Planck's constant. Bohr said that you cannot have any angular momentum the angular momentum must be quantized they must be 1 2 3. So, n can be 1 so it is n h by 2 pi 2 2 h by 2 pi and like that that is the angular momentum of an electron moving uh, in in the around the nucleus according to 
the Bohr theory. And if I substitute omega in the expression for the magnetic moment of the electron, then this is the expression for the magnetic moment. So, I am going to substitute omega from here and I get m equal to n e h by 4 pi m. I have taken n outside because n can be 1, 2, 3 depending upon the orbit of the electron. So, in the first orbit n equal to 1, this m is e h by 4 pi m, I can substitute the values and this m turns out to be 9.27 10 to the power minus 24 a m square. You know the units current into area, so a m square. This is called Bohr magneton. This is the, the magnetic moment of the first orbit and we can measure the magnetic moments of other orbits in terms of this Bohr magneton. Now, earth's magnetic field, we all know that earth has a magnetic field. How do we know? We suspend a magnet and this magnet always settles in a certain direction which is north south direction. Therefore, this indicates that earth has a magnet or earth behaves like a magnetic field. But where does this magnetic field come from? The origin of the earth's magnetic field although so important to us is not very well understood. But scientists know that there are three things that must be there for a magnetic field to develop, for a magnetic field to become considerable. And what are those three things? A seed magnetic field, that means a very weak magnetic field must be there to begin with. This weak field can be amplified, but we cannot start from zero field. So, we need a seed field in the earth and a source of energy for the production, for the production or amplification of this seed field and the motion of an electrically conducting fluid. Motion of an electrically conducting fluid is like a current. So, we need a current to amplify the magnetic field. You know current has a magnetic field therefore, it can in some way amplify the present or the existing magnetic field. Conducting fluid is equivalent to an electric current. It interacts with the seed field and sets up complex processes which amplify this field and maintains this amplified field and these complex processes are not yet fully understood. The evidence of the presence of a seed field comes from the fact that all cosmic bodies may be planet, may be star, may be a galaxy, may be anything. All bodies, all um, celestial bodies, all cosmic bodies have a magnetic field whether weak or strong that is a different matter, but they must have a magnetic field. Therefore, the earth must have a seed field to begin with. The energy for the production of the field you see the magnetic field V is a magnetic field if we are going to increase it then the magnetic energy will increase. So, energy has to come from somewhere and what is that somewhere? The energy can come from the rotation of the earth or the convection set up by the heavy matter going down towards the center of the earth and lighter matter coming up. So, this convection or the rotation of the earth can contribute energy if required. Where does the motion of the conducting fluid come? You know remember that in the core of the earth the temperature is very high and iron is there in a liquid form and since it is in a liquid form it rotates with the earth and therefore, we have a rotating conducting fluid which is equivalent to a current and this is this is the uh, current that sets up processes which amplifies the which amplify the existing field or the seed field. Details of this dynamo process you know dynamo is an uh, is a device which produces the uh, electricity or uh, in this case magnetism and this dynamo process we know it exists, but we do not know its details. What we do know is that the magnetic field must be produced and maintained continuously. You see there you may think that the magnetic field was produced once and that is it. 
that is not possible because if once produced then over time over a very long time the field strength reduces comes down to lower values and therefore we cannot say that field was produced once and that's it it must be produced continuously so that the field is maintained at a certain value produced once it can come down and that will be the end of it so we want that there should be uh, a continuous process which amplifies the field that is present so that the field of the earth is not lost and all these for details of all these interesting things you can visit this source www.geomag.bgs.ac.uk slash education slash reversals there is lot of material on this website the magnetic field the, of the earth is something like this the earth behaves as if a very strong magnet bar magnet is placed inside it of course there is no bar magnet but the lines of force or the magnetic field lines that we draw they indicate that the field is dipolar mainly dipolar that means that uh, as if as if not actually as if a magnet is present so i have shown this magnet but there is no such magnet i have just shown it to show you the lines of the field lines and the this green line is the axis of the earth rota rotation axis of the earth and the red line is the magnetic axis that is the line joining the magnetic north and magnetic south in this lecture we saw a very important and very interesting to me at least topic of earth's magnetic field how it varies and how it could uh, reverse uh, and it has reversed in the in the uh, uh, in the past several times in fact it has reversed in the past in next time we continue with magnetism in the next lecture